So we've talked about things um, in a fairly traditional clinical sense um, up until now, um, but the research um, is very clear uh, and keeps getting, the results keep getting repeated that strength development is actually absolutely critical um, to functional improvement over time. And that's what we really care about, right? Is we really care about how well kids can do at home in school and in the community. And if we are developing strengths, um, then that really is setting us on the path um, to being successful at home in school and in the community. Um, and so we're seeing more and more research indicating that um, not just having strengths, but developing strengths is critically important um, in behavioral health care. These are data from another public behavioral health system. Um, I uh, did this work with um, Dr. Sarah Akamatsu, the wonderful um, researcher who went on to work for a treatment agency. Um, and what we found there um, was very curious and eye-opening to us. So the first thing that we found was if over the course of six months of treatment, um, strengths decreased, so you had a lower number of strengths for that child, symptoms increased. We found um, that if strengths weren't developed as um, uh, on average uh, in the course of treatment, that symptoms didn't improve. And then we found um, that if there was a focus on developing strengths and strengths were, uh, were developed, that symptoms improved uh, more quickly than for any other group, right? And for every other group, the symptoms basically didn't improve, they just got worse. Um, so strength development and symptom improvement actually uh, go hand in hand. And it's important that there's a focus um, on both. So even though um, we might focus on uh, diagnoses and clinical concerns, part of the way that we address things is by saying, what is it um, that you want to become and how do we help develop that? In fact, there's been a ton of research about what that looks like. Um, in the, uh, the workbook that's, uh, that's available online, the Idaho Federation of Families, um, they talk about uh, both the goals that you would like to achieve and um, the things that are amazing about your child, the strengths that your family has, um, the people that your child likes to be around, spend time with, um, and the things that they like to develop, right? All of those things um, are critical um, to developing positive functioning. This is really central um, to the clinical enterprise, even though it's been overlooked uh, substantially um, in the past. And so when people say, um, I wanna identify a child's strengths, we have to say that there's a next step that you have to take with that too. It's not enough just to identify what a child's strengths are. The next step is to actually develop those strengths. And when we talk about them, there are really two big clusters of strengths. And so I'm using the framework that's been identified, uh, been developed by the Search Institute. So these are um, well-researched and validated strengths um, that have been shown uh, to help youth um, grow up in ways uh, that they say here are healthy, caring, and responsible, right? Uh, so exactly what we're hoping for. And they divide strengths into two kind of mega clusters. Um, one are external assets. This is the environment that's provided for a child to succeed. And so they talk about the supports that they have, how that child is empowered, how their appropriate boundaries and expectations um, that are used um, to help the child to, to identify what are appropriate and inappropriate behaviors, and then constructive use of time. So how their time is channeled into things that will help them uh, develop in a healthy way. And you'll notice there are 20 different um, items there um, that identify what are these external assets um, or strengths um, that can be put in place or are in place um, for your youth to help them be successful. And then there's a second set of these, which are internal assets. So um, again, we have another 20 items 
um, you know, includes things about being successful um, educationally, having values that are um, meaningful and interpersonally helpful, um, socially, how to get along with others and build uh, helpful relationships, um, and then having an internalized sense um, of self that is um, that's caring, responsible, and future oriented. Right? Um, so what is that positive identity? Um, and these are really the types of things, these two sets of, of assets are the things that um, we should really be working to develop because they help a child whether or not they're uh, receiving formal support services, therapy or, or other services or not. These are the things that help them um, be successful in the community and can carry on um, even beyond um, formal services and, and the end of uh, formal treatment. And we know that they actually help um, motivate young people um, to be involved in treatment. So one of the, um, when we were doing focus groups with youth, one of the things that youth said is they get really tired of, about how people, uh, therapists in particular, always focused on their past and what they've done wrong. And they're much more interested in what they can become and how they're going to get there. Right? And thinking about these strengths or assets is a way to help move people from saying, oh, the past is really not where we want to be stuck. We don't really want to be um, doing the kinds of things that got us in trouble before or relating to people in a way um, that caused problems. What we want to do is to figure out how you can become the person you want to be. Um, and this is really about shifting that framework um, towards a much more positive frame. Um, and in fact, it's actually much more effective um, as a frame for treatment. So really looking to see um, on that treatment plan, how are strengths being developed? And if somebody says, I don't know what strengths are, um, then uh, this is a very substantial list of them. Now, you can also crosswalk these with the CANS items. Um, and so uh, what I've done here is I've just uh, offered a, a crosswalk um, with these CANS items um, <clears throat> that make some of this explicit, right? So if it turns out, you know, the youth is struggling um, with, oh my gosh, um, with externalizing, <laughs> that might be a warning to me, um, with externalizing concerns, um, you might think about developing strengths around peer influences, the use of their free time, um, how they're developing um, interpersonal strengths to positively relate with other, other people, um, and then their family support. Um, in parentheses there are um, the crosswalked um, items or, or clusters from the, um, the developmental assets sheet that I just showed you. Um, so if you're using that to say, well, what's the bigger set of things that we could work from, and then how does it translate into a CANS item? Um, this will help you do that. Um, you know, if there's internalizing concerns um, that a person is uh, struggling with, then some of the things we would hope that they would be developing are a, a sense of the future that's positive, so that's optimism, um, their own talents and interests, things that they care about and want to do, uh, a sense of connectedness to their community and engagement in that community, and also a way to have positive social interactions with other people. Um, that are rewarding to them and not anxiety provoking. Um, so those are, you know, strengths that um, that map onto um, these clusters of concerns. Um, you can also see um, sets of strengths there um, that are associated with substance use and, and reality testing. So these are just some things that you um, would likely want to explore and make sure that the therapist is exploring as you're thinking about what your treatment plan objectives are. Um, as they're moving forward.